Okay, so in this video, we're going to do a simple particle system tutorial, and we're going to use a snowstorm as the project. So when you create a new project, you're going to see this scenes folder here. You don't have to keep it. We really don't need it. So I'm just going to click and then delete it just to clear up what's down here. We can leave the packages. So first thing we're going to need is ground. So we go to game object, 3D object, and we go to plane. And then what we're going to do is we don't want this to be white. We're just going to make it a green, like for grass. You could actually put a grass texture if you want, but I'm not really worried about that. I really just need something for the snow to fall onto. So I'm going to right click in the asset area, choose create and choose material. We'll call this grass. With the asset selected, you can come over to Inspector and you can change some attributes of it. Click on the rectangle next to the eyedropper. Brings up the color picker. So on the outside, we choose green. And then on the inside, we choose a darker green. We close it. And the change automatically takes effect. There's not like an OK or anything in the color picker. You can just left click, drag and drop that onto your ground. Now, when you click on the camera object, it'll give you a preview down here of your scene. So if we click on camera, you can see that this really isn't angled right. So we're going to push the ground down. You could pull the camera up and rotate it. We might do a combination of both. But let's start by uh, moving the ground. So once you click on an object, you can click on the move tool and you can move it along the three axes. So Y is up and down. Red is left and right. Uh, excuse me. Um, Yellow is Y, which is up and down. Red, which is X, which is left and right. And blue is the depth of field, at least by the default setting. So we're just going to drop that down. Click on a camera. That looks a little bit better. But now we're just going to scale this out. So we're going to click on it. Click on the scale tool. And there's nothing precise about this. I just want it to take up more space. We'll click on the camera and that's really good enough we're, we're not trying to make like a full environment or, or anything i just want to demonstrate how this is going to work i'm going to click on the plus sign move up the camera a little bit rotate it towards a little bit and if you notice over here when i moved the position the uh, y-axis moved so you could actually just type the number in here likewise when i rotated the x rotation changed so you can either do it visually or you can just manually type in the numbers here. OK, so we have our ground. Now let's go to game object, effect, particle system. And this is the beginning of our snowstorm. Now I'm going to zoom out using the scroll wheel. Now the perspective that you're using does not affect the, the director's camera, for want of a better term, does not affect what the player is seeing. This is purely uh, the, de the developmental camera. So we're going to rotate this again. You can either grab the corresponding axis, or you can change it here. As you can see, they both accomplish the same thing. And move this up. Now, this is really you could use this, but we don't want the snow to be coming from a single point like that. We really want it to be coming from a much larger area. So a few things you can do. You can change the shape, like you could say make this rectangular, or if you want to stick with a cone, we can do that. So here in the inspector, click on shape. We'll leave it as cone. But once we select this part of the component, you'll notice we now have some visual controls. So let's shrink in the bottom so it's more of a cylinder than a cone. And now I expand the outside. So I'm just grabbing the dots and moving them that way. OK, so a bunch of things we need to do. Obviously, the snow is falling through the ground. We don't want that. The snow is really kind of big, and it's really not enough coming down. So we'll take those one at a time. So let's change the size of the snow. So again, over here in the particle system, you can see start size. Make that like 0.2. 
we might decide it's too big. A lot of this is sculpting. It's unless you have a specific calculation for coming up with these, a lot of it's sculpting. It's what looks good to you aesthetically. Now it's probably falling too fast. So for start speed, we'll change that to say three. Again, might be too fast. We can always change it again. This is mostly, again, sculpting, guesswork, eyeballing it. Now, if we want the snow to build up, we want it to last it a while. And right now, the start lifetime is only five seconds. Well, that's not very long. We'll bump that up to 45 seconds. So the longer that uh, a particle lasts, the more total particles there are on the screen, because it makes sense, because each particle will last 45 seconds. So what happens is there is a max particle count. If you exceed that, then these will stop falling until uh, some of these disappear. So watch what happens. So down here it says max particle count. I'm going to shrink this number to a way too low of a number. See how it stopped? It's going to keep going. Those are going to last for 45 seconds. Then new ones will be created. So keep that in mind when you're messing around with like the lifetime and the speed and things like that, uh, what the max particle you want. For this demonstration, I'm going to use like 6,500. Okay, so another attribute that affects max particle as far as what you would need is a mission. So we're going to expand it mission. Right now it's only 10. That's the rate over time. So let's bring that up to like 75. So now we have a lot more snow. So that means you might hit this number. So again, you're going to have to be mindful of how many particles are on the screen. It's easy enough to do the math because you can take the rate times by how long it lasts. And you'll know if you've got enough particles. Now what we want is we want the particles to stop when they hit the ground. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down. And this is a section called collision. So we're going to click on that. And you have a choice. We're going to do collision with world. And suddenly, now they're bouncing. Well, let's look at why. So in the collision area, we have a few things going on. We have a bounce by default. In this case, we don't want it to bounce. So we'll set bounce to zero. Sorry about that. It froze, I guess, because there were so many particles that had to recalculate. So now you can see it's um, building up, but they are slightly moving. Why? Well, there's no dampen. So let's do a one dampen so they're not moving. And again, it's going to freeze because there's so many particles on the screen. So that brings up uh, one of the issues with this. Very resource intensive. But um, again, this is more of a demonstration. So you may not necessarily use this method, but it's a good way to teach you how these systems work. So you can already see that it's actually building up. So let's run this now. So there's our snow coming down and slowly building up. Now again, aesthetically, is it snowing too slow? Is it snowing too fast? Is it not heavy enough? It's coming straight down. Do you want it to kind of like be moving a little bit more laterally? So what we can do, let's collapse a few of these. So emissions, shape, let's go to velocity over lifetime. We're going to have it move along the x-axis. Let's say just like 0.1. Eh, let's do 0.3. Watch what happens. It's a little bit hard to see here, but if you're following the individual particles, they're now moving horizontally. So it's probably easier to see if we select it here in the... Yeah, it's very faint, so let's increase that a little bit more. Let's do like 0.6. There you go. So that's a little bit more evident that it's moving over. So let's move the particle system over so things aren't falling off. We'll change that a little bit more. Let's make it 0.7. So I want it to be kind of obvious that's falling to the side. So all right, that's a little bit better now. It's a little bit more obvious that's kind of coming in from the left and going down to the lower right. What we're going to do now, 
we're going to copy this. We're going to paste it. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back to velocity. But now we're on the second one. And we're going to make this negative 0.7. In other words, we want it to go the exact opposite direction. And we'll slide it over in the opposite direction so it's not going off the area. So now we have two separate ones running at the same time, crisscrossing in opposite directions. And there you go. So just like that, you have a rudimentary snowstorm. Like I said, there would be some issues perhaps with um, how, how resource intensive it might be. So you might use this more for like a cut scene because a lot of cut scenes are using in-engine graphics rather than a pre-rendered image or a pre-rendered sequence. So you could have yourself a nice little real-time snowstorm. Okay, I think that's about it. Again, like I said, you may not necessarily use this method to make a snowstorm, but you've now had a crash course in a bunch of the aspects of using particle systems, such as how to have uh, collisions, how to have them build up. Do you want it to bounce? Do you want it dampened? And like I said, a lot of this is really kind of like sculpting and that as you change one attribute, you have to change another attribute accordingly. Like for instance, when I had the snow having a velocity over time on the x-axis, I had to move the position to adjust for it. And sometimes if you adjust speed, you might have, find yourself adjusting emission. Because if it's traveling slower, you might not need to have as high of a emission. Depends. So like I said, it's kind of like sculpting. So I think that's about it for now. A good crash course on using um, particle systems. And I hope you found this helpful.